Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on pseudocode convention. Today we'll be discussing the best practices and conventions for writing pseudocode to design algorithms effectively. Pseudocode is a high-level representation of an algorithm's steps written in plain language and can be easily translated into code. It's a useful tool for designing and communicating algorithms before actually implementing them. Here is an example to show a pseudocode. Note that it is not specific to any programming language. This is a pseudocode written for finding maximum element in an array. There are several benefits of using pseudocode in algorithm design. First of all, it helps in understanding the algorithm's logic and structure, making it easier to spot errors and make improvements. Secondly, it makes it easier to communicate the algorithm to others, including your peers, stakeholders and customers. Finally, it can help you avoid getting stuck into the implementation details and focus on the overall structure of the algorithm. There are a list of conventions used for writing a pseudocode. Let us look into them one by one. First and foremost, let us look into the first convention of the pseudocode indentation. Indentation is used to show the structure of the algorithm and it's a crucial part of writing readable and understandable pseudocode. For example, if we have a loop, the code inside the loop should be indented to show that it is part of the loop. Similarly, if we have a conditional statement, the code inside the if clause should be indented to show that it's part of conditional statement. Comments begin with a double slash and continue until the end of the line. Blocks are indicated with matching braces and a compound statement can be represented as a block. The body of the procedure also forms a block. Each statement is terminated with a semicolon. Identifier begins with a letter. The data types of the variables are not explicitly declared. Rather, the data, data types will be clear from the context. Next, let us talk about naming conventions. It is important to choose a descriptive and a meaningful names for variables and functions in your pseudocode. This will make the code easier to understand both for you and for others. It is also a good practice to use a consistent naming conventions like uh, usage of camel case or snake case throughout your pseudocode. This will make the code more readable and will help to prevent naming conflicts. Another important aspect of pseudocode convention is the use of keywords and symbols. Different languages use different keywords and symbols. So it is important to choose a standard set of keywords and symbols that are easy to understand. For example, you can use the keyword if, else, for, while and function to represent conditional statements, loops and functions in your pseudocode. You can also use symbols like plus, minus, multiplication and a division to represent mathematical operations. We will learn how to represent for, while and repeat until looping statements. To begin with, let us consider a while loop. While loop takes the form while condition do and the list of statements which comes inside the while loop. Here, as long as the condition is true, statements get gets ex executed. When condition becomes false, the loop is exited. One thing to be noted here is that the value of the condition is evaluated at the top of the loop. And look into the conventions used uh, here because while is a loop, it includes a block. So blocks are put inside the braces and look at the indentation that is provided for the statement that is inside the loop. All the statements are indented and also the statements end with a semicolon. Next one is a for loop. The general form of for loop is for variable value 1 to value 2 in steps and do the following steps. And then we have the list of statements which is inside the block. Again, look into the way the statements are written. Statements inside the block are in indented. Statements end with a semicolon. Since it is a loop, it, the statements are included within the braces. Here, and one more thing to be noted here, the value 1, value 2 and step are arithmetic expressions and the close step and step and step is optional. 
and considered as plus 1 if it does not occur. It means that how many steps the value should be incremented. So, if you do not include the variable step or the arithmetic expression step, it will be considered as 1 which is taken as optional. Next, let us look into repeat until. The syntax or the way of representing repeat until loop goes like this, repeat and then you have the list of statements that are to be repeated until the condition is satis satisfied. Here, all the statements are executed as long as the condition is false. The value of the condition is computed after executing the statements. Next, we have the conditional statement. A conditional statement has the following form. If condition, then statement. It can also take the form if condition, then statement 1, else statement 2. Here condition is a Boolean expression and statement, statement 1, statement 2 are arbitrary statements that is included. Next we have the input and output. For input and output, in pseudocode are done using the instruction read and write. There is only one type of procedure, algorithm. An algorithm consists of a heading and a body. The heading takes the form algorithm, name and then the pa parameter list. The body has one or more statements enclosed within braces. An algorithm may or may not return uh, values. Consistency. Finally, let us talk about consistency. Consistency is the key when writing pseudocodes. It's important to follow the same convention and styles throughout your pseudocode as this will make it easier to understand and less prone to errors. For example, if you use a certain style of indentation, indentation or a certain set of keywords and symbols in one part of your pseudocode, you should use the same style and symbols throughout the rest of your pseudocode. Uh, so, oh, thanks for watching and these are the list of conventions we have looked into for uh, writing a pseudocode and that is it. These are the key conventions and best practices for writing effective pseudocode. By following these guidelines, you will be able to write a very clear, concise and understandable pseudocodes. Thank you so much.